1929, on a December evening, a sketch of a building was drawn. The sketch was stunning, but more importantly, it was big. So big that the man drawing it was so anxious because he will be the one presenting it the next day. That sketch was to become the Empire State Building, and that would challenge the development of those times. It was not only the tallest building, but it pushed to the limits all the companies working with them. Just think, it had the longest telephone line, it had the fastest elevators, it had the most workers per day, it had the fastest floor rate, it was built in one and a half years. And all of this happened because one man drew that sketch, and another one motivated him to do it. I was so inspired by the story that upon visiting New York, I actually went up to the 86th floor to see the view. I have a deep fear of heights, you have to understand that. And I even took a selfie uh, on the top of the Empire State, and if you look closely, you will see horror in my eyes. Yes, uh, that man, we can surely say, was a big thinker. And that inspired me to actually go deeper. I haven't been that way uh, back like seven, eight years. I had a more modest vision, although back then I thought it was the best. I used to do sales uh, for car insurance. Uh, that's the lowest form of sales you could ever do unless you were selling tickets to classical concerts in Armenia, uh, which I also did. And uh, after that I got an upgrade, I went to work for the government and uh, I used to attract investments to Armenia. So both of this made me really good at presentations, and I started wondering where I could cut my skill to actually make more money. Today, I help companies with those presentations raise money. Uh, those also help them in different uh, ways. They help them hire, they help them sell, they help them market. In one way, uh, they attract resources to accomplish their ideas. And those ideas are crazy. And part of them are even crazier. And tech has this big, really fast dynamics you can't imagine. I've seen a guy who was working from his bedroom uh, grow to someone who couldn't decide where to put his logo on this new building that they have just bought. And that's a pleasant problem to have. I mean, let's agree. Uh, and all of that happened uh, during five years. I've seen this growth in front of my eyes for five years. The street on the building where I live got renovated on, during the same five years. And uh, I, saw, I realized that I started to think differently uh, in this environment. Uh, then came COVID and uh, fucked up everything we know about life and work. But uh, my vision stayed. So my mind had already changed itself and uh, I was able to travel, even though being geographically paralyzed, my mind was kind of traveling. I'm not talking about psychedelics, yeah. So let me try to explain this in a different way. Imagine uh, you get a coupon uh, for a Lamborghini for three days. You drive that Lamborghini to the fullest, you enjoy the Alcantara seats, the fancy dashboard, and then you return to your everyday Toyota, which might feel slightly underwhelming, but uh, the thing is, you know that somewhere there, a better thing to drive exists. It may not be necessarily yours yet, but it's there and you can get it. That is the way I envision the word vision, right? Seeing something that you can get. And then if you develop a little more, you may envision things that don't even exist. It's like your brain lost its virginity, you know? And your mind opens up. Uh, feeling this influence that the technology industry had on me, I had the first thought, okay, I have to get more and more friends into this sphere because I felt a good thing. Now I want my close friends and then the other people to actually feel this. I started talking to people. I started uh, telling them this is good, but it was like a brick wall. I, I can't talk to people. They're afraid because they don't understand. And I'm like, okay. I went a little deeper. I tried to understand what was it that I attained during this time that these people do not have so that uh, I can teach this. So not long after I realized that there is a, uh, two ways of thinking about this topic. Not surprisingly, one is called the tech approach 
One is the non-tech approach. So uh, those are two different worldviews. Uh, I happen to be in the middle, which makes it fun to watch. But if you're trying to kind of convert people from one to the other, you have to do a lot of talking. So the first thing about tech that you have to remember is technology exists to solve problems. So since day one, mankind has created different technologies to solve different problems. It, from starting from simple household problems to complex business needs, tech is about solving problems. It's a business, just like other businesses, with some slight difference that the roles are different. And those roles are being accomplished by professionals. Those professionals are known to you, and you, most of you call them nerds. But from the inside, I can surely say that there are different types of nerds. So these are the people you would meet uh, in your future, uh, and if you start working into tech, so let me tell you a little bit about what these people are, right? So software developers, this is the most commonly misinterpreted job, right? These are not just coders. These are the people uh, who solve real business needs, and they have different levels of responsibility, and here you go with this junior, senior stuff, and whenever you hear a programmer is making a lot of money, that's the seniors, okay? And how do you become a senior? You work your ass off as a junior, uh, you solve mathematical problems day after day until someday your paycheck gets bigger. And then another time, guys come and solve the other problems and then you go to the serious problems. So there are the security guys in tech. Security guys are the people you don't want to mess with. First of all, they have your browsing history. And these are the guys who examine and analyze everything, every single thing. These are the people who actually read license agreements. You know, this long text after which you put the tick and then you click the accept button, which is way more appealing than, you know, uh, reading that long text. Uh, if your house has one door, your tech infrastructure has hundreds of them, and this, the security guys have all the keys. And uh, imagine reading this whole license agreement. Sounds scary, right? So imagine writing one. So the license agreement writers are the tech lawyers. These people, again, they remember everything. I've seen a lawyer actually recall a license agreement. So these two people are incompatible. So if you want to have fun, just put a security guy and a lawyer in one room, give them some food, but take out all the knives just in case. So if the security guys are the good guys, then the bad guys are the hackers. Uh, hackers are one of the most interesting types of people you can meet on this globe. They're uh, romantic, they're passionate, they're childish, but they're fucking dangerous. You know, this typical criminal romance mixed with nerdy jokes. And the thing about these guys is that I've noticed all of them like expensive things. Not because uh, they have shit tons of money, which they do, by the way. No, because it's fun, and they do a lot of stuff for fun. But you don't worry about the hackers unless your email password is like 1234. You can change it any time. I mean, that's... But do it as fast as you can. Okay? Yeah. So there is a thing in tech called the UX design. You know, it's when people make sure that your experience with the product is actually good enough, right? So when you have the, uh, something that is not very, you know, comfortable to use, the, tech, the UX designer at some point fucked up. And these are the people who are actually interested uh, in people, the tech people who are actually interested in people, because they have to examine people, they have to analyze people to see what is comfortable for them. And uh, like if Earth had a UX designer, uh, she would get fired for creating winter. You know. Yes, yes. Tech marketers are a, are a totally different race. So the, the, on, the main difference and the only difference, I think, at, between a tech marketer and a regular marketer would be that tech marketers make two times more money. And another distinctive feature is you cannot tell half of what these people are saying. Because uh, what they say can, you know, like lower the CAC, extend the LTV, and boost the ROI, you know, you know what I mean, right? And finally, last but not least, talking about the tech guys, you cannot ignore the startup people. 
you know, the proud and the privileged, the game changers and the disruption drivers. Yet, 90% of startups fail. Most of the time, is a team of amateurs. The founder, a typical startup founder, has to build a product, talk to customers, uh, rent an office, uh, motivate the team, post about all of this on Facebook to engage their audience. Honestly, doing a startup is a freaking misery. This will be confirmed by any startup founder. And yet, they do the startups. You know why? Because they have the vision. There is this famous Apple commercial that said, uh, the ones that are crazy enough to think that they can change the world eventually end up changing it. Because they have a vision and a business plan. There is a thing uh, called professional deformation. You know, when people, due to their professional skills and capacity, see the world in, in their own perspective and not from a broad human perspective, right? So the French called this uh, deformation professionnelle, which sounds really sexy. And then the Americans came up with a more friendly name, which is called nerd view. No, nerd view. So uh, this nerd view is applicable, actually, to a whole industry. So coming from this, this helped me understand it, uh, because tech people by default have a nerd view, and non-tech people have a nerd view towards the nerd view. It may be complex to you know, understand. So one day, well, one month to be precise, I got nine different job offers to be head of marketing at nine different tech companies. The funny thing is I'm not a marketer. So I, I try to go deep and to see why this happened. And it turns out that if I talk a lot, I act like I could be a marketer, the nerd view shows marketer. So you can send offers to this guy. I sincerely hope someday I will get that offer that I won't be able to refuse. And the thing is the, offer will be, the offers will be coming. Not because I'm a genius, but because there is a drastic deficit of people in tech. The whole world right now has a deficit of around several, several million people. That's huge. Armenia only had 6,000 people, uh, 6,000 open vacancies for technology professions in 2020. That's 60 times this audience. It will take a mid-sized village to actually accommodate all these people. It would take 2,000 taxis to drive them around as if we don't have enough taxis in Yerevan. But seriously, if these vacancies were filled, we would be living in a much better country now. Higher paying jobs would mean higher salaries, would mean more money in cafes, shops, more money for the economy. High salaries would bring salaries higher in other industries. There would be more schools, better schools, more universities, more creative. Diverse working culture would bring to diverse culture in society. Diversity would bring to creativity, and creati creativity would boost the art. We could be living the bright future now. Empire State Building wasn't built until someone had the vision, right? Clubhouse didn't raise a billion until someone had a vision. A disabled man didn't become a web developer until he had the vision. All it takes is challenging the limits and taking the first steps. Because in the worst case, you'll have a great story to tell. Thank you.